heard that you guys from your publicist are going to do the interview is going to be hilarious. So I'm just forewarning. It has Don't to be you, that's nothing less than, like, I don't want funny. Can you hang, sorry, can you hang on just one second? Why the fuck are you always saying that things are going to be funny? Do you understand how much pressure that is for me? No. Like, you know, I'm going through stuff. I'm trying to get off pills for this stuff. <laughs> so then all of a sudden it's like, oh, pressure, dance, monkey boy, dance, dance. So you laugh because you think he's kidding. He's not kidding. I'm going to have to hold him for a significant amount of time after this is over. It's, it's not you, Kenda. It's, not, it's, just, it's just a lot of... I get it. We'll and now you. look, now I'm eating my feelings. Yeah. <laughs> okay, can we start? Can we please start? <laughs> You've not been starting? Well, yeah, this is gold we're giving you. Yeah, this is, I know. It's a, it's a gold mine happening right here. Okay, so... That sarcastic tone is not necessary. <laughs> <laughs> well, the first thing I'd like to address about, oh, I don't know, sex after kids... Go on. No, no, tell me how it came about. Was this, you know, I know you've got two kids of your own, so was this something mm -hmm. you were just like... Observing more. It's yeah, and also I wasn't having sex. So <laughs> yeah, you had all this free time. Yeah, I had all this free time. So he would just write. He would write for four to seven minutes at a time and just get it done. <laughs> just knock it out. Come up with one really good idea, usually a little prematurely, and then have to go back and kind of finesse the rest of it. And this knows far too much about my process. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, for me, it was just this process. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I wanted to make an ensemble film, and so that was the that was the first step in the process of. of the project that I was going to do, and then we set about to write down a list of ideas, and I was going to narrow it down. And the first thing I wrote was "Sex After Kids," and I stopped because I'll never come up with a better title than that. Mm. And 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 it I was know actually you had misread your to-do list. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was that. Yeah, so I know that world. I, I have uh, two children, and I have a lot of, and then I live in that world of friends. And and the nice thing was, I mean, the way we made this film was that we, I more or less cast the film and then wrote it. Yeah. So. And a lot of the cast, not Ennis, has children, <laughs> so they're able to uh, contribute their stories about you know sexual, and, and Ennis just contributed his frustration for sex. <laughs> I think I was able to communicate the joys of not having kids. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On well, some that's, level. That's, that's his part. Yeah, which was oh, only you know, one character. Paul Amos's character was that one. He didn't have any children, right? Was that the only Katie, character? Katie Bowen's character doesn't have Katie kids. Katie yeah. Bowen's, right? Oh, right. Yeah, oh, right. I remember that. But I think what's what the good thing about this movie that kind of didn't strike me until we, until I watched it the second time uh, was uh, just that you actually give a voice to that other argument, mm -hmm. the other side of the, not argument, but debate that having kids can kind of mess up your life. There's people in the movie that without judgment... I mean, it doesn't seem like you're judging the characters yeah. that actually say, come on, you don't get those parts of your life back when you have kids. You, you can't be honest about it. You can still admit that it's actually, yeah. it drains you of some things. You know what I mean? Which characters did you uh, – this is for both of you. Which character did you most identify with? Katie. I think I identified with Katie a lot just because I know what true. it's like to be sort of a just a nubile young woman out in the city for the first time, you know, and – when I read the script, I, I was like, you. I was like, I love this part. I can't wait to play this thing. You know, um, it's really awkward. what do you want to do about my hair? And he's like, that's a woman. And I'm like, so it's about the craft. And you know what I mean? I'm a vessel. You I could play this. a woman. You could play a woman easily. Yeah, and, no and I mean, it doesn't, it didn't even, it read gender, gender neutral to me. Yeah. And, uh, and that's just because that's sort of, that was my journey when I was that young, you know? And I mean, Jeremy, you were there for a lot of it. Yeah. So yeah, but I guess yeah, whatever. Ben's Ben was fine. It was good time. <laughs> ben the button-up shirts. That was a good time. When Peter Callahan has some moments at some point in the film that are not the most kind thoughts towards children, mm. you know, I think most parents have those thoughts. They just don't say them out loud because you'd be considered a terrible person. Yeah. So, but down to, I mean, all the storylines are something that's either out of me or friends I know. Uh, some of the cast, like I mentioned, uh, I mean, the lesbian storyline, surprisingly, is probably the closest to kind of like some of the issues that my wife and I go through just in, in the idea that how do you parent and how do you agree on parenting and how does that work and who's right and who's wrong. That's also one of the, the best, I think, elements of the movie that for me that really, re I mean, resonated. It just, it just seemed I had a lot of empathy for that situation because especially when you – when you look at the definitions of parenthood and then you have a lesbian couple, one of them had the baby, one of them obviously, you know, t t brought the, uh, the pregnancy to term. And I thought handling that sort of subject on top of all of the stress of being parents, then you've got this almost sort of hierarchy because, you know, not, not that she, they ever throw it, you know, Kate doesn't really uh, throw it in Mary's face in the movie, but just the fact that, you know, one of them tries to parent harder because she didn't carry the baby and, 
I just it was great. It was really complicated stuff to deal with, and and you get a window into a a, a way of raising kids that you might not have even thought about. Mm -hmm. But no, tell me how you crafted that story together. To you know, kind of create that. Oh, I want to. Oh, cook. you could have been here. Mm. It's a short flight. Okay, good. You're so melty. They're really, really good. And yet with a little crunchy. And you can't even describe the flavor. You just have to experience. Yeah, there's no real word. <laughs> the real word I can think of is oh. Mm. This is like torture to a woman. You realize yeah. that, don't you? It's like two get... <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> two gorgeous hunks. And cookies. Jumping away. Oh. You asked about the craft. I totally lost my train of thought now. That's okay. <laughs> Me too. I need a I need a cigarette after that. Woo. <laughs> the cookie. <laughs> after that cookie. But crafting like the storylines and that kind of stuff. Yeah, like how you yeah how you made them so fleshed out and within a few scenes. Well, I mean, one of one of the beauties of, of an ensemble is that you know you have less scenes with each storyline than you would traditionally in a movie. So really, almost every oh well, no not almost every single scene you're with somebody is a turning point. And so, but, but the trick is to make sure that you feel like stuff's happened in between. Uh, and that was kind of the trick of that. And I mean, yeah, so in, in, in some ways it was kind of easier writing something like that, knowing that you don't have to fill in in between with a lot of filler scenes. Um, and then it was just a matter of, for me, it was just balancing, making sure, it was more about balancing the comedy and the pathos and the drama. Mm -hmm. And then around, so it was more about, I mean, coming up with like how the storylines are going to work out wasn't the harder part. It was more about balancing them amongst each other. Yeah. What, what was great was that I had, in a way, you know, a dozen collaborators mm. because they were able to really think about their storylines <clears> and, and really get further along that way. Where So I think the script developed a lot faster than most do because of that. And I really like that process. It's hard to do that when you're going with traditional funding and that kind of stuff because you need to hand in your scripts and that kind of stuff to get your funding. So it's, it's, I mean, kind of the way we made the movie is the only way you could do that process when nobody's getting paid a damn thing. <laughs> um, I saw on IMDb, which is just the truth, as we know, yeah. um, that you had got a lot of the cast on because of of what you were writing about. Blackmail photo. No, yeah. Sorry, what you saying? Yeah, well, because they had ex had those experiences. They understood the story, so they were they had climbed onto it because... Because they were attracted to the story, is that right? Yeah, I mean, some of the some of the cast I'd worked with before, and, and some I'd, I'd met in other capacities. Ennis and I met in prison. Yeah, <laughs> I was on a two to four breaking and entering. They're all different. It's like, and and what's great about writing when you've already kind of cast the film is that you've got the voices in your head to some extent. Mm -hmm. um, but for me, I mean, I think it's also important that you want to give, especially like, like I said, you're making a low budget film. The actors aren't getting paid much. You know, they're doing it for the love of it, so is to also give actors something to do that they don't normally get to do or stretch themselves in a different way. So, I mean, in a lot of ways, what was really fun for me was to show people how fun some funny someone like Zoe Palmer is, who normally <clears throat> doesn't get to play the comedic role. Yeah, she's, you know, she's okay. Yeah. No, I was in stitches. Yeah. So that was it, fabulous. But she no, doesn't typically get to do that kind of stuff. It's know? a really I mean, good thing she hit her head before the show and thought she was British. Yeah. Because yeah. the accent yeah. really helped. The second it ended... That yeah. was good too. Snap gone. Yeah. Good I thing have there's to no say, shoots. one of the funniest moments though is with Ennis when he's running down the street. <laughs> it's like... supposed to be like a really hot, sexy scene. I mean, <laughs> was was Sorry, I'm just curious as to how that was the image of me running was funny to you. Oh, it's so funny. It really was. And then you stopped and you're like, I'm not even close to home. So I've just acted your acting back to you. I, I Thank you. I appreciate, appreciate that. that. Thanks. <laughs> the funnest part about shooting it was that we did both. Most fun. Most fun. Funnest is the movie. most fun part about shooting that. Well, you're a father. You can't yeah. say funnest. It's gonna. Kind of, your kids are gonna love it. Okay. Was, uh, we did about five takes of that, mm -hmm. and I I've never told Dennis this. We didn't start rolling until take three. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just ran full tilt. A couple. <laughs> that, that's true. That's really true. Why are you telling me this? Because you needed to act like you'd run across the city. Oh, Mr. Scorsese, <laughs> Mr. I, I had Joaquin Phoenix bang his head against the wall. I didn't know I was working with P.T. Anderson over here. So I'm going to ask you a little bit about your own projects that you've No, got going absolutely on. not. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. Um, so I wanted to ask you, you're on season five of The Listener now. Have you yeah. shot it? Where, where you're in the middle of shooting it right now. We're in the, the third and fourth episodes. We're shooting them in little blocks down at uh, Pinewood Studios in Toronto. So it's pretty cool to actually work right in downtown Toronto. Mm -hmm. I think they're working on the new Guillermo del Toro movie, like the next lot. So it's just kind of fun to be around 
that kind of activity, you know, to have other projects, TV shows, movies working in the same facility. Where we shot the first four seasons of The Listener was out in Etobicoke, lovely town, but oh. it, was, it was sort of uh, us and that was it. You know? There's just some changes coming and uh, there might be a little bit of a career, uh, uh, you know, detour for Oz. So um, there's, a, there's a pretty, I've been working in a new set, I'll say that for the last couple of days and, and that's been a lot of fun. Mm. Uh, that'll roll out eventually. But uh, yeah, season five, everyone's back at it. There's some great new people involved. And maybe a face or two from the past. Ooh. And you're doing something called, I saw a poster for it, Bastards? Is that Bastards. right? What is that this about? Is, uh, this is in Bastards. Oh, hi, guys. Sorry. Hey. Hey. <laughs> uh, Bastards is a short film that we shot in November that we I'm just almost finished cutting. Mm-hmm. And uh, and we the hope is that we, we take it around and try to get some interest in it as a TV series. Where's these glasses in it? Yeah, I got to I got to sport these glasses and a mustache. I was very happy. It was really with it. awesome. Like, really fun to have that. That's how he looks. Can we that's talk exactly about the look? So, yeah, we can talk about it. Well, Julian Richings plays a, uh, a sort of a um, an aging Keith Richards style sort of rock star who finds out he has a terminal illness, and he invites or summons, implores his illegitimate children to come to his house and compete for his fortune and his affections. And um, I play uh, sort of his Alfred. Slash turtle from Anton. <laughs> so like that's yeah. exactly what you are. Do you get sex after kids as a TV show or anything? I love I love that idea. Uh, it's something we're talking about. Really? Yeah, we're in the other stages. Really? It's awkward. He's. What do you mean? Like make it like a? He's not in it. It's just weird because I haven't heard about it up to this point. It's, uh, he said early stages. I sort of asked him to run things by me, but. Uh, now's, now's, now's a great time. Now, <laughs> really, I'm running it by you. Is it awkward that it's in, in the middle of an interview? Sure. Maybe. But I'm not, so not you, telling what did, you. What did you have? Did you did you want to use a lot of my ideas that I suggested? Most of them. Okay, for he opens a skydiving school. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> That's in there. Right, perfect. We're yeah. good. We're good. It's all CG though, right? Because I can't <laughs> right, break heights. Yeah, we're gonna do mostly CG. Thank you. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for taking the time. Eating okay, there's one. In there's one more me. cookie in here. It's. The one with your name on it. If I was in the city, I would come to and have chocolate cookies look like Kanye West any day of the week. Look at look that. Look at that. That's Isn't that perfect. amazing? That's it's just, perfect. it's right here for you. Is it a, ch- not anymore, it isn't. Look at that. <laughs> look, smiling. Got, I'm going to put it right over your face on the screen. He's smiling at you.